Well, what are we doing today? Well, I'm watching you on one of your uh, sponsored track sessions there, <laughs> Mr. Big Shot YouTuber. It's not sponsored. Influencer. <laughs> Social media. Hashtag racing. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. Hello everyone, my name is Ian and you're watching Big Rock Moto. Thank you so much for tuning in today. And if you're new here and you like this kind of content, I hope you'll consider subscribing. Today I'm in Riverside, California at SoCal Supermoto. So this year I've been trying to become a better rider. I've been taking all different kinds of classes that I can get my hands on and I've been really, really enjoying it. So Supermoto, it was the next up in line for me. So we're gonna spend all day today riding DRZ 400s around a Supermoto track. So I'm doing this to try to become a better, more well-rounded rider. And I think the cool thing about Supermoto is, from what I understand, although never really having done much of it, honestly, is that it combines sort of dirt uh, riding skills with street and track riding skills all together in one race course. So I think it should be really fun, really good learning experience. So uh, why don't you come along for the ride with me and we'll see how much fun we can have and how much we can learn. Yeah. Got the track yeah. doggy here. This is the official. Yeah. Track official. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's right, she's in charge of black bike. I'm Ian. Hey, How welcome. Hey, come Good on morning. in. Welcome, welcome. Um, I'll introduce myself since I'm Brian and I'm the one yapping at you all day. I've been riding Supermoto since 99. I did some racing here and there, nothing all that impressive. Um, our passion here is motorbikes. So um, we, we don't care if you ride adventure bike, cruiser, sport bike, anything, whatever you normally ride, uh, riding Supermoto is going to help you. Right, so if you never ride Supermoto again, it doesn't matter. You will, because they're, they're stupid fun. Um, but everything you learn today will translate over to whatever you normally um, normally ride. Um, so who's done the school before? Everybody. Dude, who wow. hasn't done the school? <laughs> All right, you 12. <laughs> Teach those two. <laughs> Personal goal, I want you guys to stop thinking about motorcycles like sport bikes, dirt bikes, road race bikes, whatever. They have a lot more in common than they are different. So they are gonna have slight differences in body position or pretty significant differences in body position, but that's not important. And most people will focus on the wrong stuff and we'll go over why that is. Um, so here's the official mission statement for the day. Uh, one, that you learned something that you didn't know before. Two, that you ride safe. Three, that you have a really good time. Um, I already know you're going to uh, learn something that you didn't know before. I don't travel suspension. You get into a turn on a um, sport bike and you're doing this, you know, you're probably crashing. Um, this is like every turn on a supermoto bike, right? So half of what we're doing today is getting you guys comfortable. That big white handlebar, use all that leverage to your advantage. These bikes love a fast transition and they love being flicked from side to side. So um, really just get comfortable off my rev limiter in line four riding bastards. <laughs> so always somebody going, hey, g -g 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 the power hit you're waiting for ain't coming. You start off with 100% front brake. The reason is new riders like to come in too hot on cold tires, apply too much rear brake, bike slides, they freak out, they get off of it, high side. Very, very common newbie mistake. Your elbows up and your chest out. This is how you're basically riding the entire time. You could ride ridiculously fast on a supermoto bike, riding around like this, just dipping the bike underneath you. You'll lean, but the bike will lean a little bit more than you, okay? So this is your default position. That's enough to keep you guys going for the first couple hours out here and learning the track. I'm gonna put white X's on the track. Those are gonna mark the turn in points. They're gonna be your best friend out here. So. Um, all right, well, I'm geared up. I'm wearing the uh, Sidisi, uh, I think it's the Garda suit that Revzilla sent out, really like it for this kind of riding. Sidisi snow approved helmet, really appreciate that. So let's head over to the bikes, to the track. I'm gonna set down this camera, get my helmet camera going, and uh, we'll start to see how this goes. But I really like how they really focus a lot of it on safety and not trying to be race, racing around and egotistical and trying to you know, win and stuff like that. That's really important and I think will prevent people from doing stupid stuff. So uh, let's get to riding. Are you ready to ride Supermoto? As ready as I'm gonna be. Yeah. These bikes live a hard life. You start to look at it, you've got that. I mean, I've never seen foot pegs that are actually, actually like twisted like that. <laughs> these are tough little bikes, these DRZs. 
on Brandon's bike here, shift lever, sort look of. at that, sort of a shift lever, you know, you've got, she's held zip ties, this is like a KLR 650 with the zip ties. It's like less than my KLR. <laughs> Testicles in the tank. The track is really, uh, it's been raining like the whole past week and it's been kind of cold. So there's no ice, thankfully, or snow, but it's just kind of wet and cold and we've got cold tires. So we got to go super slow just to get oriented with the track. can tell this is going to be a really really fun day the corners are so tight because it's a go-kart track it's just the opposite of the racetrack that I got off of in Las Vegas at the Yamaha school and one thing that's already really given me a hard time is for supermoto riding you shift your body weight like you would on a dirt bike not like a, uh, a street bike where you're hanging off the inside you actually put your butt off the outside and lean the bike under you and um, yeah it's a whole different technique because of the bike the chassis the suspension the speeds involved and how the race tracks are set up <laughs> That's how you want to ride a motorcycle. You want to go out there and you want to casually kick ass. And just in general, um, just try to do as little as possible. Every single turn, you need to brake, you need a counter steer, and you need to get on the gas. That's it. Isn't that crazy? And if you don't know why you're doing something, this isn't about you, I'm already going off beyond that. Um, if you don't know why you're doing something on a motorcycle, don't do it. it it's that simple. Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna go over first the homework assignment, then I'm gonna talk about some stuff I wanna talk about, which will be a review for a lot of you. And then, uh, yeah, that'll be pretty much it. So this is a, a lesson I call me and my buddy Damien. My buddy Damien comes in here and rails and says 18 miles an hour. I come in at 10, I exit at 20. His average speed is 18, my average speed is 15. What am I doing better? Better drive. Speed. Yeah, better drive, better exit speed, right? Yeah. But I passed a uh, CRF 450 in a straight line with a DRC, right? He full throttle and I passed him in a straight line and it's all because of getting on the throttle. So if any of your badassery uh, gets in the way of you getting on the gas, if any of your hard braking, your drag and peg, your sliding the bike, anything gets in the way of your ability to get on the gas, don't do it. Um, so basically uh, always prioritize this. And what this is, is our first uh, homework assignment. In slow, finish it out for me. Out fast. Out fast. So so it's funny, you know, I'm noticing a lot of similarities between the Yamaha Champion Riding School and some of the core, like, curriculum areas that they teach or the methodologies, which is, you know, um, when you're going around a corner, it's actually more of a V-shape than a U-shape because you're trying to get the bike in the right direction so you can accelerate more, you know, uh, get on the gas faster instead of trying to make your corner speed faster. You're trying to reduce lean angle to reduce the risk. You're trying to do a lot of these same things. So it's really interesting, the similarities. The big thing that's really wigging me out there or making my brain kind of hurt is that on a supermoto course, on a supermoto bike, you're um, leaning the bike underneath you and you're putting your weight to the outside of the corner like you would on a dirt bike instead of a sport bike. So quite different in that regard. Um, but it's really, really fun it's a whole different thing um you still have and it's just you know you're on a dirt bike you're on a drz but you're on sport tires so everything about it is kind of wrong at first but it starts to get really really fun and what i what i think the truth is about all this is that the more of these schools you do the more you can kind of put everything together on your own right you can start to take the lessons from all these different classes and see the similarities and how everything kind of fits together and then you can become a better rider yourself and make your own, you know, make your own uh, plan for your own riding. So it's really, really cool. All the stickers. So the stickers on the racetrack are the turning points and the apexes and things like that. So if you can focus on getting the right line and getting all the other stuff together, then eventually you'll start riding faster. So see, you've got to go way outside here to then get to this sticker here on this apex. So some of the stuff seems some of the stuff seems counterintuitive. 
um, getting the corner entry right and then getting things lined up for corner exit. It's exactly like uh, at the Yamaha Champions Riding School when I was doing that. So like here's this apex sticker here. Now here I can use all the racetrack and go out this way. There's a sticker there. Now we got to get this sticker here. Hit that apex. Drive right over this one. And then this little like tricky little kind of two corners right here. Boom, boom. Hit that sticker so you can get wide enough so you can hit this apex right here. And then you can open up and use the whole racetrack here. What the instructor was also saying was again exactly just what they were saying at the Yamaha school, which is that the fastest riders, oops, I totally blew that. The fastest riders um, sometimes don't have the fastest corner speeds. But they're coming out of the corners faster because they're they have a better direction. Why? Why are they not dragging their knee in Isle of Man? That um, you to get the Isle of Man guys, you put them on MotoGP, they'll be dragging their elbow too, right? Isle, MotoGP guys on Isle of Man, they won't be dragging their knee. Why? Because they want to win. I'm going to tell you something that's going to sound really opposite um, to what a lot of people think. I want you to think of leaning the motorcycle as risk and lack of drive. Even if you didn't care about the risk, then just think of it as lack of drive, right? Which is why they're not doing it in the Isle of Man. All right, so for this session, what we're doing is, for the first four laps, we're supposed to have really good discipline not go too fast and get every single hit every single tape line so the entry points and apexes because if you don't ride the bike on the correct line you just you just can't increase you know your safety and ultimately increase your uh, your speed if that's your goal so it all goes down to that so super important you blues almost like you came out of big monza and you got really sketchy going into that left hander and that's because you basically you turned in like as though it was a normal turn which puts you go turning in way too early on the second one and shooting off the track and all that sort of stuff but that's okay because we're going to go over lines right now we're going to go over how to evaluate your own line then we're going to go over how to fix it when it's wrong and then we're going to go over all the lines out here on the track Red is turning in too early. When you turn in too early, it sends you going off the track, and that's when you're like, ah, right around there, right? Um, so, I already told you red's wrong. What do you like? Uh, which line here? Green, blue, red? Green. Green. Yeah, blue is safe. Red's dog shit, right? Red's horrible. Blue is at least safe. What's wrong with blue? You're just long. losing everything going into the Yeah, it's just too tight. It's just too tight of a radius. So you're doing everything right in that it's a single input. You're able to get on the gas nice and early. And then what's wrong is that you're doing all that stuff that's right from a very slow speed because the radius is too tight. Uh, green has our larger, largest average radius. It has a single turning point. You're able to get on the gas nice and early. So if every turn was a 90 degree right hand turn, I'd be like, I right, dude, go do green and we'd be done with this entire talk. Every turn's different, so I want to give you one, the tools to evaluate your own line, two, the tools to fix it when it's when it's wrong. One, single input. Uh, when you get into a turn and you're at maximum lean angle, from a steering perspective, what do you need to do to finish the rest of the turn? Nothing. That's right, not a damn thing. So if you're doing something other than nothing, use, uh, from a steering perspective, that usually means that you turned in too early, right? So, uh, you're nice and relaxed. And that's related to single input. Number three, early gas. So this is the only thing you take out of this entire talk. Ride in a manner that allows you to get on the gas early, and that's going to give you the right line. Most turns, you can see through the turn. So this is a classic 
classic Udo V, right? Classic Udo V late apex. Who can define apex for me? Shout it out. What you got? The shortest, uh, for the closest point? In the closest way? point to the curbing. Yeah. Totally right, totally wrong. I'll explain it later on. What else you got? Point where I'm afraid to pick up the throttle. Yeah, afraid, earlier. point where he's afraid to get on the throttle earlier than that. So where you get on the gas, where you get off the brakes, where you change direction, the slowest point, where you carry the most Gs, the the uh, the peak of the turn, uh, where you get off the trail braking. Like you, you hear all this different stuff when you ask people what the apex is. The science definition doesn't match the motorsport definition, and that's why there's confusion. In science, you turn this into a big triangle, and that would be the apex, right? In motorsports, it's way over here, nowhere near that point. It's just where it become the closest to the curb. So it's only a reference point. When somebody says late apex, it means that you're coming close to the curbing late in the turn. Now here's, this is what I mean by just a reference point. I could go out there with curbing and a construction crew and I add a bunch of curbing over here. All of a sudden, this is now a double apex turn, even though the line is identical because it now has two reference points. So we know that the apex is late here. Why? Why is the apex there? Because where the straight is. Because the exit? Because the exit, because when we're doing this, single input, relax and we're able to get on the gas early on this particular turn it has us coming close to the curb late when we do it that way so generally speaking apex is pretty consistent even on different bikes and that sort of stuff so um when so we're between track sessions so how a lot of these schools run and this one does too is that you'll spend like 20 30 minutes on a track and you'll come inside for a 20 30 minute classroom thing because they've got other groups going out on a track. So it works really well, it allows you to get stuff, get lessons between the track sessions. And what I see a lot of people doing is, you know, they're trying to go fast, and by going fast, they're making a lot of mistakes, which is increasing their risk and things like that. So you really have to fight your uh, instinct to try to want to go fast and impress people or whatever, get the right lines, think about all the techniques that they're trying to teach you. And this is just like the other schools I've taken. It's like, it's in our instinct somehow to just want to push and go faster. But that's not right. You have to really fight that. And I learned that in the Yamaha school, but I'm learning it here as well. And just try to get the lines right, listen to what the instructors are saying, the concepts, and then you'll start to go faster as you improve your technique. So going faster is a byproduct of good technique, not something on its own. So anyway, we're gonna get back out on the track now. So in the Yamaha Champion School, they were teaching us the first 5%, last 5%, right, of the inputs to make sure the suspension doesn't uh, go up and down too abruptly to control the chassis better to be smoother. So they're teaching us the same thing. And what they're saying is try to ride in a way where you minimize the movement of the suspension. So pretend there's like a bubble or a level on your bike and then uh, try not to upset the chassis by going up and down too much. So what you have to do is smoother transition onto the throttle and then smoother transition on and off the brake. So instead of being abrupt, you know, you're uh, you're just doing it more smoothly. So I'm going to I'm going to uh, focus on that so I can get this done. And the reason you probably don't see the uh, the dashboard of the bike in the video is because you have to sit way forward. You have to sit up almost on the gas tank of these bikes to get them to corner properly because of the way the chassis is. from school I go on and then off like that and you could do that on your on your on your clutch and your brake and your rear brake and your counter -sync. and you'd be smooth but frankly that's a lot to think about because now you're thinking about being smooth on five different inputs and right now you guys are generally good to about right here meaning that you'll come in smooth smoother harder Okay, I'm done. Right? And then you just watch the bike unload on you. So you see this all the time. You get on the gas, throttle up on the gas, and then cut it. Turn, gas, cut it. Right? So usually the inputs you guys are pretty good on. 
the outputs that you're really bad on, if I may generalize. So I have a technique for all this that makes things really, really easy. It's called the suspension no move drill. We're gonna go to Home Depot in our minds, and then we're gonna buy one of those four foot construction levels. I've been doing this for 13 years and I've yet to just buy a level. I'm gonna do it today. After this talk, I'm ordering one on Amazon. Yeah, you're gonna clean your visor I'm gonna do it right now. Yeah, clean my visor. So um, you gotta put that construction level on your seat and you're gonna ride around so that doesn't move. You guys think you're doing this. You think you're coming in on the brakes and going, wah, right, right, right. It's not that, but you can actually brake pretty hard and have it do that, you know, not even um, move that much. So um, what you're gonna do is you're gonna ride around so that the sus suspension doesn't move. You're gonna think about one thing and one thing only, and it's gonna smooth out everything. And here All right, so back on the track after lunch. What we're doing this session is we're trying to look all the way through the corner so they're trying to get us to focus on vision so i really find that doing these mini drills like this focusing on one thing at a time just like in the yamaha school i just took it really helps your brain uh you know uh, learn because you're only focusing on one thing at a time right so they're trying to get us to be one step ahead with our vision of where the bike is right so I should be looking through that apex and to the next corner. So focusing on this is really helpful. Yeah, this is better for sure. Just looking out further ahead. That's useful in all aspects, all different kinds of motorcycling, I find. Play with trail braking. A great way to do this is come to the little Monza. Intentionally don't trail brake. Brake if there's nobody around you. Okay, you're by yourself, come in, brake. At the turning point, get off the brake, and you'll, what you'll find is the bike will run wide and kind of up. It'll be really hard to hold your line. And then when you actually actively trail brake, it'll just tighten up that line so much. Um, so we're gonna do suspension, no move. We're gonna trail brake. And last one is, don't crash. Uh, don't crash. All right, so what we're supposed to focus on this time is doing faster transitions. So I'm riding behind my buddy Brandon, who you might recognize from the Ducati film that we did, the Multistrada. His riding has improved so much today. I've really watched, it's really incredible. I mean, he's really quick now and he didn't start that way today. So it's amazing, you know, what these courses can do. We have our elbow up, like you are asking about the foot earlier. The reason we have our elbow up is it allows the bars to move if you have a if the if the rear steps out on you. So it's not like it's helping you go faster when nothing's going wrong. It's helping you one with confidence to push it a little bit higher, knowing that you have some error room and uh, prevent crashes. Believe it or not, that's not right, but that's better than what 90% of motorcyclists are doing because you're at least identifying a turning point and an apex that already puts you way ahead of the curve. What we're going to do is the same thing. We're going to back it off one step before I get to my turning point. I am going to look at my apex. My peripheral vision can see exactly where my turning point is. The second I know I'm going to make my apex, then I'm going to go ahead and look at the, at the uh, exit. And again, my peripheral vision, I can see where, the, uh, where my uh, apex is. So, all right, so we <laughs> just had some pizza for lunch. I got some more instruction, some more training in the classroom, which was really great. Um, again, a lot of similarities with the other classes I've taken, so it's really, really cool to see that. So the dirt, so Supermoto is part dirt, right? But the, the problem today is that the, the dirt is like pure mud and we're trying to see if the sun can dry it up, but it's been raining for the past week, like every day. So super muddy, we might not be able to get to do the dirt stuff, which is um, disappointing, but it's mother nature. What can you do about it? So, um, you know, maybe I'll come back for another session uh, in a few weeks or something and, and do that because I really wanted to kind of mix that part in. But anyway, it's going really well, learning a lot, getting to be better riders. You can see everyone's progress. Uh, yeah, so much fun. Okay, we're halfway through the day. Tell us everything. Tell it now. It's starting to come together. It's starting oh, yeah? to feel right, yeah. yeah. I saw you go around me in a corner. I was like, there he goes. I, I'm, I'm getting a little bit of the fizz now. <laughs> yeah. You know, less thinking and more it's coming a little bit more well, What changed for you? Just focusing on my acceleration point out of the curves. That, that one tip. So it was that last tip you gave about yeah. like looking through and then, yeah. Uh, also from the last session, the keeping your braking inputs smooth and those transitions, Lots more braking this time, but still smooth. Yeah, you look like you're going fast, so. 
Yeah. You must have had a breakthrough. It, it, it felt like it. My big thing is not to crash and get hurt because then Maggie says I can't ride anymore. And that'd be a little bit tough since I make a living from doing this now, so. You're not very good at it. <laughs> so I come out of Little Monza, I'm a slow transitioner, and I go transition, and then transition, and then gas. Nothing horrible there, right? That's fine. Um, let's say I'm a faster transition. I can go a little bit deeper, flick it. I just bought myself a straightaway. Gas, flick it, gas. I'm on the gas earlier, and I'm on the gas with a straighter shot um, up the inside. We'll do some official supermoto action now and get open in the dirt section. I'm just going to tell you right from the start, we're not riding dirt. We're riding different traction around the uh, around the um, track. If you start thinking like, oh, I'm riding dirt, I don't want you guys thinking that way. I want anybody riding the rain? Who's never, well, I'm sorry, who's never ridden in the dirt? Everybody has some dirt experience. Okay, cool. So everybody's ridden in the rain, right? I want you to think about riding in the dirt the same way that you think about riding in the rain. Um, so this first part we're going to do is just how to survive the dirt section and then the next time around we'll go over kind of more traction specific supermoto specific stuff okay so uh here's just basically how to survive the dirt your first time through or second time through on a on a supermoto bike and for those that have done the dirt section before um you know how we normally lead front brake yeah. everybody say no front brake no, no front, front brake i love it number two um stand up Anytime you're going straight, uh, including the entrance, because the entrance has this like lip that goes up. Um, anytime you're going straight, make sure that you're standing up. If I call 911 today, it's because you guys are taking the jumps while sitting on the bike. Um, so, and I don't want to call 911. So, um, just make sure to stand up. Number three is steady throttle. If you're sitting on the bike and you cut the throttle, um, it'll you know make the basically dive right or you'll flip over the front and run yourself over so anytime you go to jump anything stand up steady throttle well good news we are going to be able to do the dirt so that's going to be awesome so it's going to be a real supermoto that uh, track they had to modify the course but it's dried out enough uh, where we can do the dirt section so the thing he was talking about which made sense to me he's like don't think of it as riding dirt like a dirt bike like you would because you're on street tires and you can't really do that. So think of it as just surviving the dirt and not crashing and then getting back on the pavement. So. Going from dirt to back to pavement like that, it requires a complete mind adjustment i'm sure you eventually get used to it but totally different methodology like and it's an instant change and so i think this really helps this is why so many professional riders or racers use supermoto as a training tool i think <laughs> that's fun <laughs> to the uh, I told you we get into some more supermoto specific stuff and traction control stuff. All right, guys. So this is the this talk is the three concepts of traction control: one in doubt, throttle out, and it's kind of a crock of shit because you can't sit at home reading twists of the wrist, being like, okay, when I lose traction, apply throttle. You've already high sided. This has to become muscle memory. So that the second that the traction starts to lose, you're automatically getting on the throttle. Or if you're losing traction from too much throttle, you're automatically learning to taper off the throttle without cutting it, right? So how do you do that? You do that by doing exactly what you're doing today. Riding small motorcycles and varying traction. We had a lot of different traction in that yeah. section, you know, in yeah. that whole session right there. So just by riding small motorcycles, mini motos, dirt bikes, super motos, you will develop this muscle memory so nothing i can teach you other than keep doing this there's a reason that all the moto gp guys and they're all doing flat track and, and uh motocross and supermoto it's to hardwire their right hand to their brain to their rear tire so you just you just learn to really fine tune that so many times i've been right next to a student they crash i don't not because i'm some badass just because i'm relaxed so i'm having the same traction losses that they are but because i'm nice and relaxed the bars can correct so so let's ask brandon again how he's doing with his riding as we're, we're almost at the end of the day we're going to do like the free laps where we can ride on our own and kind of practice our skills so what have you what have you learned um i've learned to breathe 
breathing is, is really key to this. Everything else seems to go better and comes together. It helps you not to overthink what you're doing and keeping your line, all of the core basics that you need to know to just ride better. It's a lot of fun though. So uh, would you come back and do it again? Oh, definitely. Are you gonna go to other riding schools with me? Uh, you gonna go to super bike school? Yeah, you're paying, right? <laughs> wait, 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 break, 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 break. Good lord, this is fun. Punch it. Let's wrap this up. That was an amazing day out here in Riverside at SoCal Supermoto. You know, we learned so much. It just reinforces all the skills that you learn in all these different classes. Choosing the right line, when to start braking, when to get on the gas, how to shift your body weight around. Everything just makes you more confident in all situations. And the cool thing about Supermoto is that you're on dirt and you're on street on the same track. Like literally like 30 seconds, you're on the pavement and then 30 more seconds, you're back on the dirt. And so it teaches your brain to switch back and forth between different traction surfaces, which is what you deal with in the real world. And um, and also it's just a heck of a lot of fun, like incredibly like giggle laughter kind of fun when you're riding. So I highly recommend checking it out. If you've got a supermoto school or a course in your area, check it out, get with some other people who do it. Highly worth the time. And uh, it's just one of the things you can do to, to build your riding. So I'd recommend checking out SoCal Supermoto if you're anywhere in Southern California, if you're gonna be in Southern California. Uh, it's an amazing school. Brian, the guy who runs it and owns it, it's a family business. Um, I'll put the information down below. Check out their website. The training's really affordable. It's like between $300 to $350, I think, for the training. Really, really affordable, great training. So thank you so much if you stayed this whole time for, for watching this video and uh, tagging along with me. I had a ton of fun making it. I hope you had fun watching it. Um, please support Big Rock Moto. There's ways to do that in a description below. Besides that, ride safe, and I'll see you out there.